tonight. Not only are we celebrating the uh, publication of the Columbia Anthology of Modern Japanese Drama, and this is this uh, fantastic uh, book here, um, which took almost uh, a decade to, uh, to produce. This is very, 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 very brilliant work, we think, and I hope you will be able to get an idea um, of uh, what is inside from three readings uh, or excerpts of plays today. It's also for sale today, just for $40 instead of $75. It's a great offer that the um, Columbia University Press made uh, for us. So I welcome uh, uh, Cody Fulton here from the Canada, Professor Colton, who is uh, uh, the, uh, one of the editors. And he's in conversation with Peter Ackersell, who is a professor of theater here at the Graduate Center of CUNY at the PhD program in theater. And we especially welcome you. I think it's the first official collaboration um, in the program here at the Siegel Center. And we look forward uh, to many, many more. He is uh, in, in some way replacing Professor Daniel Gerald, who many of you knew. And instead of focusing on Eastern European, or European theater, his specialty is uh, Asian uh, theater. But of course, uh, uh, the field has moved and it's global theater, it's European. It's hard to put those uh, uh, boundaries on it, but still his, uh, his field of expertise is he's from Australia and it's a great uh, addition to our faculty. Also welcome the executive director of the PhD program here, G Professor Jean Graham Jones. Um, so we also have presented many evenings here with writers from Latin America, mostly Argentina. Um, we will have um, three readings, three excerpts, the middle, the beginning, the middle, and the end. In between, we'll be, we will be discussing uh, uh, the play. It shouldn't be longer than 90 uh, minutes. Um, there is a reception afterwards. And here, if you have additional questions, there will be a Q&A uh, where you will be able to ask questions, but uh, maybe if you have um, um, other um, thoughts or uh, things to share with, with the director or the playwright or the actors, um, please uh, uh, do so. The plays are directed by the great translator, Aya Ogawa. Where is Aya? Uh, she is here, who is also a, herself a theater director and writer. Is a brilliant uh, New York theater uh, artist um, who also is represented with translation in the book, if I'm, uh, if I'm right. So uh, it's a fantastic uh, collaboration. A lot of things came together. And again, also congratulations to Columbia University Press for believing in books, uh, for uh, supporting such a long process and creating such a valuable uh, uh, resource, which will be for uh, decades uh, the uh, guiding light when it comes to uh, Japanese theater. Uh, the last 100 years, this is uh, what uh, we'll be counting. So we will hear more about it. First of all, just to introduce uh, uh, Cody. Cody's professor of Japanese literature and theater in the Department of Pacific and Asian Studies at the University of Victoria in Canada. And uh, he's a specialist in modern Japanese theater and also a translator of uh, many Japanese plays. Um, and uh, he's the author of Scripts of Another Sort, the plays of Izumi Kyoka, and Abega's Art, Scripting Modernity in Japan, 1900 to 1930. He's also worked on a number of other edited volumes, uh, including uh, uh, alongside this one, uh, he's been a very busy scholar over the years, I think, and uh, uh, so it's a, it's a very great pleasure to welcome you here tonight, Cody. Well, um, thank you very much pleasure. for coming. Um, uh, also, just to give you a little bit of background on the uh, work of Aya Ogawa, who's directed the excerpts tonight. Uh, she might be known to most of you in New York. She's born in Tokyo, raised in Georgia, Texas and California, and is now based in Brooklyn. She holds a Bachelor of Arts in Theatre Arts from Columbia University, and she's a writer, performer, director, translator uh, in theatre, and she's translated many Japanese plays, including um, uh, one of the plays that is in the volume, uh, Okada Toshiki's Five Days in March, and that will also be the final excerpt that we'll hear tonight, an excerpt from that play, uh, very superb translation, actually, that she did. Um, so just to begin our discussion tonight, um, just a little bit uh, about this uh, book here, a modern, um, the Columbia Anthology of Modern Japanese Drama. Uh, basically, it, it covers about 100 years of uh, Japanese theatre from the early 20th century right through until the early 21st century. Yep. And um, you're one of three editors who worked on this project over a number of years. So um, I guess we could just begin by saying, you know, um, why did you do this book? Why did you get involved in this project? And, and what do you think that has uh, 
uh, compelling about the book and, and what were some of the challenges that you faced in, in uh, editing this book? Yeah. Um, well, uh, Columbia University Press has come out with a long series of, of excellent uh, anthologies of Japanese literature over the years. Um, uh, one, of, uh, one of the editors is here tonight, uh, Haruo Shirane, who's uh, worked on uh, pre-modern uh, uh, Japanese literature and is a professor at Columbia University. Um, now, uh, some years ago, uh, this is quite a few years ago, probably a good 20 years ago, uh, Columbia came out with a, an anthology of uh, traditional Japanese theater, uh, which included all the sort of major genres, no bundaku, kabuki, and so on, uh, edited by Karen Brazell. Uh, it's a wonderful book, and I use it uh, myself all the time when I'm teaching pre-modern Japanese theater. Uh, but there was never uh, a companion volume uh, to that for modern Japanese theater or drama. Um, and there hasn't been. Um, uh, really, there have been other uh, anthologies of different kinds, but nothing in one volume that, that, that uh, students or other people could uh, go to. Uh, so uh, this was really a very timely book. Um, I got uh, involved uh, through the back door, as it were, because uh, Tom Reimer and Mitzi Amori were already talking uh, about putting together this book. And uh, Tom asked me to sort of um, uh, get on the bandwagon. And so I did. But it's, uh, it's been about a decade uh, since, uh, since we first talked about putting this book together. So I'm really happy to see it out now. I guess one of the interesting things about this book is that uh, it brings together, I think, people who have composite skills. Most of us who work on modern or contemporary Japanese theatre tend to focus on a particular genre or field or era. Um, mm -hmm. My own work, for example, is largely post-1960s. And uh, what's extraordinary about this book is that I think it covers so many diverse periods of, of, of the modern and has, is a, really quite a representational, uh, an attempt to represent a field of modern drama across 100 years. Mm -hmm. How have you organized the book and, and, and thought about that? Um, it's, it's in six sections. Uh, there's an introduction um, written by uh, Mitsuya Mori, who's uh, uh, the leading authority in Japan on Ibsen, as a matter of fact. And uh, he uh, reads and speaks Norwegian and, and has translated uh, all of Ibsen's plays and directed them uh, on the Tokyo stage. Um, he wrote an introduction um, and, and uh, was, of course, co-editor, so he did uh, his, his, his share of the work for the, the other sections as well. Um, the first, um, the very first section is, is really setting up the stage, as it were, for modern drama in Japan, uh, which doesn't really begin until uh, the first productions of, of, of Ibsen uh, in the first decade of the 20th century. Um, so in a way, modern Japanese drama uh, starts after that period, in the very late Meiji period, uh, sort of in the late, uh, say, 1910, uh, through uh, 1920 uh, is the period uh, when uh, Japanese playwrights start to write uh, plays of various kinds. Ibsen wasn't, of course, the only uh, uh, influence. Um, I, uh, my own work has jumped around a lot, and uh, I uh, published a book a couple of years ago, uh, which is an anthology as well as a kind of a history of early Japanese drama. And I looked at this period from the late 19th uh, to the 1920s, 1930s, uh, really, uh, which was a cardinal turning point uh, in uh, the creation of modern theater and drama in Japan, as well as a lot of other modern things. Um, there are other sections which are roughly uh, laid out historically, um, five sections uh, that uh, start from the early 20th century and, and move into the, um, into the 21st. Uh, and there's a final section on popular drama. Um, three genres are represented there. Uh, shimpo, which is kind of a transitional form um, from the early 20th century. Kabuki, uh, which uh, is still being written. Um, there's uh, a play by uh, Mishima, uh, Yukio Mishima, which is a kabuki play in that section. And uh, there's an excerpt of, of uh, one of the sort of 
most important uh, works of the Takarazuka Theater, musical theater, all women's theater. Um, this is the Rose of Versailles, uh, which is set in uh, revolutionary France. Um, so uh, it really tries to cover um, different genres and certainly this whole span of modern Japanese theater. You're really covering, uh, I guess, a kind of realist theater uh, right through to absurdist and avant-garde theater traditions. Mm -hmm. But you've also included, I think, a, a, a sprinkling of women playwrights from across yes. the decades and, yep. uh, and also some very contemporary um, work that uh, is you know, of the moment. Um, we aim for variety, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's just turn now then to a discussion of the first uh, section that we heard, the first excerpt from mm -hmm. the play "Living with Father." This is a play written in 1994, so yes. it's uh, quite a contemporary play, and it's written by somebody who's uh, a very popular playwright in Japan. Is that, yes. that's, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah, this is uh, Hisashi Inoue. Uh, he just died a couple of years ago. Um, but uh, he was at the top of his game. He had been very active uh, both as a playwright and a novelist uh, since the 1960s. Um, his work is uh, the closest to kind of uh, commercial theater of the sort of art forms, uh, art drama forms that uh, are in the book. Um, uh, yeah, he was, uh, he was influenced by Bertolt Brecht, and I think we'll see some uh, influence of Brecht and Okada's work as well. Um, but uh, he uh, aimed to be popular, uh, and yet uh, his work is a kind of a critical engagement with uh, Japanese history in various forms. Um, uh, a lot of his works are kind of tragic comedies, um, and many of them are musicals as well. We heard uh, tonight, I think, a, a, a kind of meditation on history. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, I think a, a play with a very so strong sense of residual trauma um, yeah. with, within, uh, I guess, the Japanese condition in, in the post-war period. Is that something that he's concentrated on in his work uh, across a range of plays? or is Very it much, I think, is it's particularly modern history. Um, one of his last works uh, called uh, Massacre Rhapsody uh, is a musical uh, drama uh, on the, uh, the life and uh, death uh, through police torture of the uh, communist writer um, Kobayashi Takiji, uh, who I think was murdered by um, uh, secret police uh, in uh, 1930, uh, around that time. Um, so he, 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 uh, his, his, his subject certainly is modern Japanese history. And uh, mm -hmm. he's very, um, he was, uh, he was a communist himself. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. and he writes for a, a very modern theater. It's a, it's a kind of realist tradition, I think, that he's, is, he's writing for. I think he comes out of the Shingeki, uh, so-called new drama uh, background. So it's, it's, it's basically a kind of a realist theater. Um, and it's uh, the closest of the three works that we're looking at. Uh, that are sort of uh, straight realist drama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, we've met, he's also a very prolific playwright. I think of, of, of the three playwrights we're looking at, he, he may well be the most prolific, although Okada's uh, still very young and he's got a long career ahead of him, I suspect, as a playwright. Yeah. But, um, yeah. You know, the Japanese, if anything, are uh, certainly prolific in, in ma many of the different genres that we look at. Uh, these playwrights uh, typically um, uh, crank out a play or two a year, um, and over the course of a, a long career, you think of somebody like Betsy Akuminoru, for example, mm -hmm. uh, absurdist playwright who's not featured tonight. Um, he's written well over 100 plays. Mm. Um, yeah, they really do crank them out, and they, they often... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's... Not all of them are good, but we tried to pick the best ones, yeah. yeah. Well, I hope you picked the best ones. Yeah. Um, so we'll um, take our seats again, I think. Sure. We'll um, hear and the second excerpt, which is uh, a play called The Attic by Sakate Yoji. Um, we're really, I mean, he's a playwright who's still alive. He's still working. He's currently working at a theatre called Zakoenji in Tokyo. Um, very active playwright and occasional director mm -hmm. as his company. Um, what, what, what can we say about this piece? I mean, it's very much, uh, so it's almost like, it reminds me of the, the horror film Ring or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, 
Uh, well, I think you can tell here it deals with a particular contemporary social issue. Uh, Japanese word for it is hikikomori, um, basically shut-ins. Uh, not shut-ins who are elderly people, but people uh, younger, generally younger people. Um, mostly men, uh, there are a few uh, who are women, uh, who uh, retreat almost completely from the outside world. Um, and of course, they need to be supported somehow, uh, usually by uh, their parents, their mothers, uh, who provide the food and uh, other sort of um, uh, needs uh, for them. But they uh, live in their rooms and uh, do not associate with the outside world. Um, the uh, play is called The Attic, and uh, for any of you who have seen this play, it's a very interesting staging uh, with a kind of garret-shaped um, set on the stage, uh, very cramped, um, and in a way is a kind of uh, expressive of the uh, cramped, claustrophobic, or maybe even agoraphobic uh, nature of, of contemporary uh, urban society in Japan. Um, and uh, the uh, kind of social pressures uh, that, that uh, people feel and uh, the sense of wanting to crawl uh, into uh, a small space and, and, and shut out the world. Now, uh, it's a series of vignettes, so each, uh, each little episode uh, has a different cast of characters and sometimes even a different situation. Uh, sometimes the attic is an elevator. Uh, sometimes the attic is actually uh, a mountain hut and these mountain climbers are trying to uh, seek shelter inside it. Uh, so uh, every five to 10 minutes, um, the scene keeps changing in a way, uh, but it is literally framed in this cramped little space on stage. Sakate has a, a, a long history of writing plays about, um, I guess, social questions and social problems. So he's really dealing with the, the kind of personal in relation to contemporary Japanese society. Um, yeah, um, he's, he's coming out of uh, the 60s background in many respects. Uh, he uh, studied uh, with another playwright and director uh, by the name of Yamazaki Tetsu, who had uh, himself uh, worked uh, with one of the sort of uh, great culture figures of the 1960s, uh, Karajuro, uh, actor, director, and playwright. Um, and uh, Sakate, um, got his start in the uh, early 1980s with his own, uh, with his own uh, company uh, called Phosphorescent Troop in English, and uh, has been uh, very active since the 1980s in writing very kind of uh, topical uh, and politically uh, charged uh, works of one kind or another. Uh, there is some kind of uh, overlap in some respects uh, with the kind of subject matter that uh, Inoue Hisashi dealt with, uh, but here, I think uh, it's uh, darker and more absurdist than, uh, than uh, Hisashi's uh, dramaturgy. Yeah, his plays, I think, sometimes are, are, can be compared to people like Abe Kobo in that they're a very absurdist, almost existential approach to language. But on the other hand, some of his other plays have, have been more socialist, social realist, or even, even in a kind of documentary theatre style. Yeah, yeah, I think documentary theatre is a really good, ex uh, good way of describing a lot of the stuff that he's doing, yeah. where he takes something like, for example, uh, American bases in Okinawa, and he you know, does a play on that, or he does a play on censorship in, in, in the MacArthur period uh, during the American occupation of Japan, and... Uh, Japanese war responsibility and, and the extent to which you know the emperor was responsible for uh, for um, starting the war, um, so those sort of things. Yeah. Mm. Well, um, I think we'll take our seats again, and then we'll hear the uh, third excerpt. Oh, that was fabulous. Um, really hard uh, act to follow, folks. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, um, April Mathis, um, Richard Toth, uh, Stancy, Stacey Yu, yeah. and uh, Aya Ogawa. Um, Aya, come and take a bow to Yeah, her. come. Yeah. Yeah. No, please, please. Stand up, stand up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
I mean, this is a completely different kind of play to the two that we heard before. It's colloquial, it's uh, first, third person, we don't know where we are, we don't yep. know... Uh, it's partly descriptive, it's partly um, subjective. Uh, what's going on in this play? Uh, can, can you give us some insights? Um, yeah, first of all, I, I do want to mention not only did Aya direct uh, the three actors who did the readings for the three plays uh, today, but... Uh, she was also the translator for the last excerpt that we heard. Uh, not just the excerpt, but the last play, um, Okada Toshiki's uh, Five Days in March. And it's a brilliant translation. I really uh, think that she did a fabulous job on, on Okada's work. Um, first of all, you have to know uh, uh, the setting for the play. Uh, it, was, it was written in 2004, won the uh, Kishida uh, Drama Prize, top drama prize uh, in that year. Uh, but it was about the uh, Second Iraq War in uh, 2003. Two. 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 Oh, gosh. Uh, hasn't Two. been so long now. Um, at any rate, so the setting is uh, these peace marches, uh, various demonstrations uh, that were held uh, at the time in March uh, during the shock and awe of, 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 of the Iraq War. Uh, protesting uh, that, and of course protesting uh, any sort of involvement or uh, tacit approval on the part of the Japanese government uh, to this war. Um, and yet, of course, most of the conversation uh, that's that's going on here, uh, most of the narrative is about this kind of uh, bin sex uh, that this couple are having uh, in uh, Shibuya at the time uh, that these demonstrations are being held. I should also add that the play has been performed not only in Japanese but also in English by the play company. Uh, and I think they also did a production of The Attic. Is that, is that right, Frank? And, uh, and uh, they're going to be doing <coughs> Okada's uh, play from uh, uh, 2012, um, The Sonic Life of the Giant Tortoise, which is uh, also a marvellous play. Um, Okada Toshiki, born in, um, when was he born? Uh, Yokohama, 1973. Yep. Um, he is, I think, the uh, leading uh, so-called young generation playwright, although he's, uh, he's not so young anymore, but uh, he came onto the scene with this play and uh, really uh, um, has, I think, established something new in the Japanese theatre scene. It's a, it's it's very new. I think you can tell from the from the language itself. It's kind of loopy, elliptical, kind of uh, up talk. Uh, at least in the, in in the English version, uh, there um, it's uh, stop, start, hesitant, repetitious in certain ways. Uh, it's a very kind of accurate way of uh, how uh, young people um, speak. Um, Rapid, uh, but but uh, sometimes uh, inconclusive and repetitious, um, and uh, the um, again I really have to credit uh, Aya's uh, brilliant translation of this because I've looked at the Japanese and I've looked at the English and then just just uh, it, it, she's done a wonderful job and you know the she catches the uh, the idiom of young people even in the English language so it doesn't feel like a translation at all. Um, Another thing that's, that, that we should uh, mention about uh, Okada, at least uh, in, in this work, and he's doing it less and less now, uh, but uh, in some ways uh, when you see his performances or his productions, uh, they, they seem like performance art because the actors are kind of um, jerking and gesticulating and, and moving around in ways that the, the body seems to be doing something completely different from... from, from, uh, from uh, the text, the, 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 the movements of the actors is, is not some kind of mimetic response to uh, the text in a, in a sort of an obvious way. There seems to be some kind of um, sort of manifestation of other forms of kind of psychosomatic trauma going on. Uh, the, the body is moving as a form of kind of noise that kind of interferes with the text in various ways. So yes, he, he actually won a choreo choreography award at one that's stage right. for yeah. one of his performances. And... Uh, yeah, and yes. it, it is a remarkable disturbance in the body that uh, I think presents in these, particularly in these early performances, where you have this very elliptical um, circular text and then the body doing some very, very uh, stamina-like movements. It's, it's a very traumatic kind of experience, I think, but also very, very funny. And very um, funny at the same yeah, time, yeah. yeah. As, we, as I think we saw. Um, 
Okada comes out of a, 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 a tradition in Japanese theatre uh, called the colloquial theatre movement, or the um, sometimes referred to by uh, uh, the work of Hirata Oizawa, um, the so-called quiet theatre movement, that uh, really concentrated on capturing Japanese uh, colloquial language. We have a, another uh, excerpt in, in, in this work of a longer work by Hirato Orisa called Tokyo Notes from the 1990. And uh, in a way, he was the sort of the uh, one who created what he called contemporary colloquial theater, uh, a kind of a language which was not sort of imitation of sort of uh, Shingeki realism, uh, trying to uh, make uh, drama uh, more responsive to uh, the way Japanese communicate and uh, social interactions in Japan. And uh, you see that uh, Okada, I think, has sort of taken that uh, a further step mm -hmm. uh, in, in uh, using sort of uh, hyper-realistic uh, language and uh, it's, it's kind of loopy syntax uh, to say something uh, new um, and express something in a very sort of uh, interesting and intriguing way about contemporary society in Japan. And you were actually the translator of uh, Tokyo Notes. Yeah. So, um, uh, the whole play is being translated, of course, as well, which you, mm -hmm. uh, with your translation is a remarkable, also a remarkable translation, I think, of a, of a, of a uh, you know, this kind of extraordinary uh, humour, but a uh, high, high degree of tension also. It's, so much of it is subliminal, mm. yeah. It's, mm. it's a real subtext, and trying to translate subtext is quite a job. Yeah. Um, Cody, we're just going to move into the final section of the discussion now, and we'll, we'll open it to questions in, in just a minute. But before I do, I just wanted to ask you what you thought about the, you know, the hopes were for this volume. Um, <coughs> Where do you see this volume going? First of all, I hope uh, that all of you will buy a copy tonight. Uh, it's on sale uh, for only $40. Uh, regular price is $75. Extraordinary cheap. Um, yes, it's, it's a real, it's a steal. Um, uh, certainly it's a textbook uh, for uh, students of, uh, of drama. Um, and I hope uh, that uh, it gets to be used uh, in the uh, context of, of, of world drama and theater courses. Um, and also you know, by people who are interested in Japan. Um, and uh, these are texts that can be um, staged. And I hope that uh, people who are interested in uh, contemporary uh, theater in Japan, uh, we're, has some of the most interesting theater in the world, I think, right now, um, that, uh, that you will consider seriously uh, staging some of these excellent works. Yeah, I, I really hope that is the case, and I think we're starting to see that happen, I think, increasingly. So, uh, and it's and to thanks do. to CUNY, which is doing a great job in introducing many of these works to, to New York audiences as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, on that note, I think we'll open to questions for about five or ten minutes, and I think, Frank, you're going to uh, yeah, moderate that. Um, for the audience, and, uh, we are recording the event, so not only we will hear you better if you take a microphone, but also we will have um, the questions, and uh, so if there are some, some questions for the writers, can you take and hold it close, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, what you were just speaking about, the out-of-sync uh, behavior, uh, that is um, in the text somehow? Is it in the direction? It's certainly in Okada's direction mm -hmm. of the plays. Uh, the texts don't necessarily have to be done that way. Um, uh, about four years back, I think it was 2010, the play company did another one of Okada's works uh, here at um, 59 East 59th. Um, it was called Enjoy. And uh, they didn't try to mimic um, uh, Okada's sort of physical performance style. Um, it, uh, it came across a little bit more like stand-up comedy. Um, so uh, that's a, uh, an artistic decision that was uh, taken by Dan Rothenberg, who directed that production. Um, so it's not necessarily sort of engraved, so to speak, in, 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 in the text that uh, these texts need to be done that way. Uh, Okada um, has his own company, though, and he has an ensemble of actors who, in a sense, work with his system of performance, if you like, that he's developed 
with them. And, um, and as uh, Cody said, he's using this separation of voice and body less in more recent performances, but he's, he's developed a theory of uh, performance around that idea as well, as uh, creating a certain kind of, if you like, a certain kind of alienation effect. It's, it's a kind of, yeah, Brechtian alienation effect, but I think in this play particularly, um, the, the, the movements also uh, highlight some of the thematic things that are going on in the play, the, the, the schism between the public and the private, um, between the, uh, you know, what people say and what people do. Um, what they think and 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 how they uh, how they how they behave, you know. Um, do you feel like you were able to um, really capture pretty much all of the the uh, different theater genres and styles over? The hundred years, which would be pretty amazing, or uh, did you have to uh, be a little more uh, uh, do a little more editing and say, "Boy," and and if so, what are like the two or three styles that you really wish you could have found room for and mm. couldn't quite get into the book? Uh, that's a really good question. I mean, all anthologies are sort of. Um, Editorializations, they're, they're, they're a form of censorship in some way, uh, that you, you, you have to push out things in order to create something that looks like it's supposed to be a canon of something or other. Um, and uh, we did that with uh, some hesitation, to say the least. Um, were there any styles that that's didn't get put in? Um, that's that's a little hard to say. Um, uh, some of the contemporary stuff uh, is so varied um, that uh, it's we really needed to be highly selective uh, about that. Um, even in the realm of popular theater, we had to go with three distinct genres uh, for that. But there are many other forms, uh, you know, comedy and, 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 and various forms of sort of uh, straight popular drama uh, that sort of span a century um, that we had to rule out. So, uh, yes, we, it, it, it was a very sort of reductive exercise, yeah. I wonder whether, too, you're, you're trying to consciously fill gaps in the in the translation project a little bit too, because there are some writers who are translated much more often than others, and there has been quite a significant gap, uh, with the exception of your work, uh, on the early modern and the, um, you know, up until the early post-war period. Um, so, well, for example, there was there was nothing done on women playwrights of the early 20th century in Japan. Um, and I, I translated two uh, plays by women for, for this other book that I did uh, called um, uh, A Beggar's Heart. Um, we've included uh, a couple of early uh, 20th century women playwrights uh, in this work. Uh, Enchi Fumiko, who's, who's known uh, mostly uh, as a novelist, uh, but prior to the uh, First World War, or Second World War, I should say, uh, she was predominantly a playwright, and a very good one. Um, Akimoto Matsuyo, uh, also an excellent playwright. She was active right up until, uh, when did she die now? I think in the 1990s. Uh, she had a long uh, career as a playwright. Um, just lost my train of thought here, but... Um, uh, so we tried to, to we tried to fill in the gaps uh, with 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 uh, some of the uh, some of the works and and introduce some uh, really interesting and intriguing playwrights that hadn't been covered in the past. Yeah, this is piggybacking on what you were just both Peter and Brian were saying, but. Um, in approaching the translations and the translation process, did you give any directives to your translators? Were, was there an eye toward certain approaches toward translation? Because you both know that there are many theories of translation. 
theatrical translation and approaches, and so mm -hmm. was it. Was, your, uh, was there a certain type of translation you were looking for? I was looking for something that could be staged, frankly. Right, um, that, 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 uh, it's, that it, it wouldn't just be a literary text that, that people would read, um, but the, uh, you would hear the living voices of people uh, in, uh, in the works. Uh, and so, I mean, I think in all drama, uh, language is action, and uh, that has to uh, come across very strongly uh, in, in various ways, that, that you can hear the characters of the, of the people and and the emotions behind uh, the words um, that they speak. And so we needed to imagine um, that these works uh, would all be spoken and, and, and uh, hopefully even enacted. Yeah. Uh, that was the most important thing. Um, uh, in terms of the selection of, of, of plays, some of them had been previously published. We did commission uh, a, a significant number of plays uh, to be uh, translated, and uh, there we went to people who knew uh, the uh, works, uh, knew the authors, and uh, whose work we respected and, and, uh, and commissioned those works. So then I um, would like uh, to, to, to thank you for this, I think, truly enlightening and inspiring discussion. I also would like to uh, mention that both uh, the attic with Yoshi Sakata, who was here, and Toshiki Okada, who was here. The American premiere readings were here. I think it also helped to get the productions done. They have been uh, good friends of, of our center, and it's so many, many years ago. So it's wonderful to see um, how uh, they've been produced. The book is now out, and then we feel we are part of uh, the history. So please do come also then to our other events. We're having a very uh, big event uh, Monday to Wednesday. It's our uh, highlight of the season, the Pen World Voices. We have nine plays from tr nine different UN regions from all around the world uh, in case you, you have time to come or come to other programs we do have. But first of all, I would like to again thank uh, Aya and also the actors. I thought it was you know, a wonderful uh, help and it made it such, make such a difference to the artists for you to come here and take out of your time of your life to do it. Thank you uh, all again. And also Peter, welcome again at the Greta Center and uh, Cody, it's also good to see you again here. Yeah. And thank you, and I hope you will all stay for the reception and, uh, and to celebrate the launch of this truly significant uh, work for the theater. Thank you. Thank you.